later when you started getting involved, I was kind of like, like this is between me and mom, you know, and stuff <laughs> yeah. and acting like a brat. But at the same time, you were never like, you just wanted respect and respect towards mom. And mm. that's also too why I, I know that you love her so much because that's mm. not right, you know, to do that. And, and I was like kind of mad at first and then, and then it's like, you're just trying to parent me. And I, I do think of you as a dad too, mm. so... Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real life strategies for building healthy bonds, understanding the kids' perspective, romance and partnership, parenting with great teamwork, and yes, even co parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Well, hey there. We're so excited that you've joined Mm -hmm. us for a very unique and special episode today. This one is a little different, (laughs) and we really hope that it brings you some value as well as some hope in your journey. Mm -hmm. Now, if you like this episode, I would ask that you would share this out on your social media and maybe even leave us a rating or a review. We would appreciate that. You know, we get to coach lots of couples through their blended family challenges And early on in the coaching process, we always have them do an exercise that really gets them focused on the future that they really want Mm -hmm. for their blended family. And we call it the barbecue story. Mm -hmm. Basically, we have them imagine a family barbecue way in their future when all the kids are grown and out of the house, when a question is posed to one of the kids or the stepkids. And the Mm -hmm. question is this. What was it like growing up in your house? Oh, dangerous question. Yeah. <laughs> and then we asked the couple to describe the kinds of things they hope to hear mm-hmm. during that barbecue conversation. That's right. And, you know, we found that that one little scenario can drum up a lot of thoughts for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, for today's episode, I thought it might be fun to have our own little barbecue conversation and then let you listen in. <laughs> Now, you get to kind of be a fly on the wall today, listening to a conversation between me and my stepdaughter, Annika. Yeah, you know, if you've listened to the show for any length of time, you've probably heard us talk a lot about Annika. Mm -hmm. And today you'll hear directly from her just a little bit about what she experienced growing up with us as parent (laughs) and step-parent, right? (laughs) Now, she's currently 25 years old, and she's still making her way in the world and figuring things out, but we thought it would be fun and interesting to discover more of her perspective around what it was like growing up in our home. Mm. Now, on the show and in our coaching, we talk a lot about the importance of understanding our kids' perspectives around all this. So we're taking the opportunity to peek into just one kid's Mm -hmm. perspective. It happens to be Annika. That's right. And we're hoping it'll be insightful for you. Yeah, that's right. And you may or may not know that we've been through a lot of ups and downs (laughs) over the past 20 years in our blended family journey. Some really high mountaintop experiences, as well as some really low and dark valleys. And and we really weren't sure what we might hear from Annika (laughs) in this very candid conversation. A bit risky. Yeah. (laughs) And as the conversation unfolds, I just want you to know, Kim and I are going to pop in and we're going to interject a few times, maybe explain a little bit more of the the, the backstory. Mm -hmm. So if you've been navigating these mountaintops and valleys kind of like we did, We just hope that listening in on this brings you some encouragement. So let's go ahead and hop into this conversation between me and Mm -hmm. Annika. I'm just going to dive right in, okay? Is that all right? Yes. Okay. What do you remember about our wedding day? Well, the night before, I know grandma made mom's mom. Grandma let me stay up way too late and my (laughs) and mom was mad (laughs) yeah i remember that but um and it was really fun and i think i was feeling excited but also like really anxious too because yeah i I told mom that i didn't want you to marry you you, like really last minute (laughs) yeah um but i don't know i remember it being like i was happy but i think i just think because my parents divorced and all that and it's Mm -hmm. like i don't really know what to think you know i'm just like Mm -hmm. 
but I liked you, you know, it was just, it was a right. big, it was just kind of a big event to me, but I was also kind of relaxed. I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah. I don't know. Do you remember why you told mom not to marry me? Because you spoke too softly on the voice answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you remember that or do you just more remember no, I don't hearing remember the stories saying over that. and over again? <laughs> I don't remember saying that. <laughs> That's too funny. And I also remember the necklace you gave me too. Like yeah. we have the photos, of course, but yeah. I feel like I do remember you guys giving that to me. You know, mm. it's I was young, so yeah. you know, it's kind of spotty, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean you were five at the time. Yeah, so yeah, I don't so you were yeah. pretty little. It's here. This is really interesting. Actually, I went and looked this up. You know, you know, mom's a scrapbooker. Oh, yeah. And so she has everything in the scrapbook. So I went and, and looked and I said, gosh, I remember the pendant, that necklace mm -hmm. that we gave to you in our wedding ceremony. And I thought, oh, yeah. And we gave vows to you as well. Mm -hmm. We actually spoke to you. We I called know. you up on the platform. That, you remember that? Yeah. And that was that's so amazing, too. Yeah. And back then I didn't realize, but it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to try to uh, I wrote these. I wrote those down. I went and looked at it, okay. looked it up. And I'm going to try to say this without me getting too emotional. I know <laughs> sometimes these conversations are emotional. But what I said was. Annika, we would like to give you this pendant as a token of our love and commitment to you. So that's when we gave you the necklace. And I said, we promise to support you in the life that God has chosen for you and to always be your friend. Mm -hmm. It was a very simple vow. Yes. I mean, basically said, I'm committed to loving you. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to supporting to you, supporting you and committed to being a true friend to you along right. the way. How would you say I've done at sticking to those commitments? Um, I think you've done very well. Overall, you know, at the time, there was times where I was obviously mad at you, like a teenager <laughs> and stuff like that. But now, you know, looking back, it's like you were a friend, always someone I could talk to and stuff. You know, you supported me and you were still am, you know, a parent figure. And mm -hmm. I was, I've always respected you a lot. So mm. I don't know. I think you've done a good job of doing that. Well, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. I've, I've wanted to do that. I, it's funny to read it because I feel like that time was profound and then at the same time when i read it i was like those are pretty simple vows actually mm -hmm. but they yeah. they're meaningful like obviously i made a lot of mistakes and stuff but i consider you very fair and mm. i've loved that about you always like mm. and you didn't even ever have kids before so that's pretty like i feel like you did a good job and i know i was like hard work sometimes <laughs> <laughs> well but, I, I won't argue with you that much <laughs> but no and you I thought you handled situations well, too, mm. just when times got bad. I, I appreciate that. Well, I, I, I definitely love you very much, and I'm grateful to be able to still be your friend and still support you and still be loving you along the way. Yes. I, I wonder, Mom and I, over the last uh, couple episodes, we've been talking about the five love languages. Oh, yes. I wonder, when when do you think you felt the most loved? We're so excited to let you know about something brand new we've created just for you. We've realized that with so many episodes available here on the show, it might feel a bit overwhelming to find the topics that matter most to you. That's why we've created a simple tool for you to receive a personalized playlist focused on your current struggle or your biggest challenge. That's right. It's called the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz. You'll answer just a few questions, and based on your responses, we'll email you a curated custom playlist of episodes that are specific to you. This simple quiz will direct you to the most impactful episodes that pertain to you personally and keep you on track in your journey of discovery, learning, and growth. So, Scroll all the way to the bottom of the show notes for this episode and click the link to take the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz today. Okay, let's get back to the discussion. I think it's like the little things that like showed how thoughtful you were. Like you you guys knew what is important to me and what I love and stuff and hmm. just like little things and honestly how you guys acted and because I know that I like was getting into trouble and stuff, but I think just, I know you'd never freak out, you know? Mm. And so I think that really showed that you guys love me a lot. You know, I knew you always wanted the best for me, like yeah. any parent, but 
I don't know, you're very calm about it, which I appreciated. It showed me that you loved me a lot. One thing that I think might be one of your love languages is acts of service. Yeah. Which means when somebody does something for you that is really helpful for you. Do you think that's true? Yes. Yeah. Just thoughtful things that Mm -hmm. help. Yeah. Help my life and something I need that maybe even I forgot, you know? Yeah. We were just talking. I don't know. I think it was last, last episode. Um, you were here one time for a visit and you had your car and you needed windshield wipers. And I remember putting the windshield wipers on and mom and I were kind of chuckling last time. Like you would have thought that I was a superhero or something because I just changed the windshield wipers on your car. (laughs) And it seems like when that kind of thing uh, happens, you really feel loved. Is that- yes, yeah, I think you're right. It's stuff that, um, like things you do that you don't have to do, you know, and I could probably mm-hmm. do myself or you could explain me, and I wouldn't care, you know, I could sure. do it myself, but just that you do it and I probably never learn how to do it. But, <laughs> <I was kidding. laughs> but well, so, Some things that's true. Some yeah, things, some things I know I yeah. need to learn, but yeah. it is just, I think, just thoughtful and you go... You take your time and go out of your way to do it, you know, type Mm. of thing. So I think that's what shows me a lot of love, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I think that's great. I mean, it's so powerful knowing how someone else feels loved and then being able to deliver on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so that was really sweet to hear from Annika, (laughs) but I'll be the first one to say that I didn't always do this very well. Yeah, I think she's being very kind. Yeah, maybe so, (laughs) yeah. Well, thanks a lot. (laughs) The the truth is, as I listened to her share about how thoughtful she felt I was, I I was remembering several times where I was actually wrestling with with resentment toward her. Mm. And some of that was because I often was caught in this trap of trying to earn her favor. Yeah. You know, it wasn't always a genuine act of service, but kind of more about my own insecurities. There were times where I would serve her and then not get much of a response. And then I would feel slighted and sometimes I'd get resentful. Mm-hmm. And I'm betting I'm not the only step yeah. parent out there who's felt that way. But yeah. here's the thing. On the flip side, there were a lot of times when I did show up genuinely in a way that I knew would express love to Annika without the expectation of anything in return. And it was so encouraging listening to her and hearing directly from her that those were actually the times that seemed to have stuck with her. Mm, yeah. I noticed that she said multiple times, it was just the little things. The little things. Yeah. And it seems that it, it was just those little subtle ways that I showed that I really was for her and I wanted to build a bond with her that actually made the difference. It makes me think about our clients, Jake and Whitney, Mm -hmm. remember who shared their story back in episode 52, where Whitney shares about some of the little steps she took to create a bond with her stepdaughter and the awesome payoff that she experienced over the past few years because of that. You know, step parents, if you're feeling stuck, you don't have to stay there. It starts with just the little things and over time you can grow that. Yeah, that's right. And so much of that can come from what Ron Deal was talking about a couple weeks ago in episode 85, when we discussed the different levels of intimacy within Mm -hmm. the five love languages. It was Mm -hmm. so interesting. And one of the things that Ron and Gary Chapman share in their book, Building Love Together in Blended Families, is that a great love language strategy for a step parent is to start by speaking the love language that requires the lowest levels of Mm, intimacy. Yeah, say more about that. Yeah, like acts of service or words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Now for you, honey, it was kind of a a fortunate thing that one of Annika's (laughs) strongest love languages happens to be acts of service. Yeah, I kind of lucked out there. Yeah, but challenges can sometimes come when a child's love language is more intimate like physical touch, Mm -hmm. but the child just isn't ready for a bear hug from a step parent. Yeah. So if that's you, keep in mind that we all need all five of the love languages and it's okay for you to start with the ones that are are a lower risk. That's right. Right. And work your way up slowly. Yeah, that's right. And here's the point. Intentionality is what's really key. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't take a ton of time or energy to test the waters around kids' love languages, but it does take intentionality. And I think that's what really helped my relationship with Annika, because mm-hmm. I'm yeah. just kind of naturally someone who's pretty intentional in most of what I do. Yeah. And that was certainly the case in building mm-hmm. a relationship with Annika. 
it seems like that paid off. Yeah. 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 So. Not just um, intentionality, but really being committed mm-hmm. and diligent, yeah. even when you're facing rejection sometimes yeah. or when you're feeling that resentment like you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So there's a little interlude. Let's <laughs> listen in on a little bit more of the conversation. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you a really hard question. Okay, these have all been hard. I'm kidding. <laughs> if you had to pick only one thing, only one, what's the most fun thing you can remember about the last twenty years? There's been a lot of random fun things that we've done. I feel like probably at least one of them was when we went on the dunes. That was oh awesome. yeah, four wheeling on the sand dunes. Yeah. You love to have fun, you know, because I'm kind of serious sometimes. I like having fun, but I'm also kind of just, I don't know. I don't think about just going and having fun, you know? Mm. So when we did that, that was awesome. And just like free, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and just for fun. And it was just me and you. And that was definitely a fun moment. And just, I know mom never would, but like when we'd go, (laughs) I don't know if we went that many times, but when it snowed and stuff and you Mm -hmm. wanted to go like drive around and do donuts and stuff. (laughs) Honestly, I don't. Shh, re- mom's gonna hear this. <laughs> you can't tell her that. <laughs> uh, just cut it out. I'm yeah. <laughs> it's just, and I don't even like the snow that much. But it was mm. just fun being with you, and I always felt safe, you know, like mm. with you. Safe, fun, you know. It's never right. like, crazy, but right. It was just to go have fun, you know, and mm. you That's definitely funny. like to have fun. I yeah. feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree. The the sand dunes were super fun. I also remember the second time we went to the sand dunes, we got there early that evening and we rented a, um, a dune buggy, a yes. two seater dune yeah. buggy. Remember that? That was really fun. Yeah. yeah. Cause we were both in it together. You yep. know, we have had a lot of fun along the way. Yeah. yeah. Just little things too in mm-hmm. between, you know? So it's been 20 years now. Mm-hmm. Mom and I just celebrated our 20 year anniversary. When you think about that time, what would you say might be the top two or three things you think that I did well? Um, one of the main things is you've always, for the most part that I've seen and been around, you're always calm. Mm-hmm. Um, I know not all the time you can be calm, but like overall, I feel you just, you're very calm with handling situations and you don't freak out. You don't, you know, like... I was never scared of you, you know? Mm. Yeah, so that's one of the things. Um, a second thing would be you've always treated mom so well, and mm. and I know she deserves that, so that made me, like, really happy. Mm. Um, and well, you're I, just, I think I might have hidden a few things pretty well then because you know that. You I'm know, sure was, nobody's perfect, you know, yeah. but. Well, you know, there was a season there where mom and I were mm-hmm. right on the edge. Yes. And a lot of that was because I didn't treat her very well. Right. And you ended up in the long run taking responsibility for that, too. And that's huge, mm. too, because every couple, you know, has their every person has their things that they need to work on. But yeah. you both obviously love each other like enough to work through those. And I remember you like talking to us, too, about it. I was like, oh, he's not that bad, you know, you know, like, but <laughs> Perfect. I, <laughs> uh, he's not that bad. <laughs> no, but I knew things were going on, you know, I could yeah. tell, Yeah. but, and I like that. I like that. I didn't know, you know, mm. because that's not how, like I saw things at my other household. So it was mm. like nice that it's just re- respectful in the house, you know, like it's not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We have worked really hard at making respect a just strong maturity, value. like keeping it to yourself. I know. I knew you guys were going through stuff, but yeah, we tried to protect always, you. For the most part, showed mom a lot of love. You care for you've always cared for her so much. Like mm-hmm. you just care about her, mm-hmm. and I and I think that's so great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, I do, and I care about you, and I love you too very much. You know, honey, I love how Annika describes you as being really fun. (laughs) And I definitely agree with that. You are always looking for ways to enjoy life and have a good time. Mm. You even looked for opportunities to engage with Annika around things that you knew I didn't enjoy much. Yes. Like doing donuts in the snow. Oh, sorry. You weren't supposed to hear that. It's terrifying (laughs) for me. Or taking four-wheelers out on sand dunes. Yeah. 
There were a lot of fun activities over the years that you initiated with Annika, mm -hmm. and you chose to spend that quality, fun time with her one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's actually a great strategy that we've talked about before on the show to help relieve that stranded stranger dynamic. Yeah, totally. You know, early on, we learned the value of one-on-one -on -one time for bio parents mm -hmm. and their kids, right? And yeah. we made sure that you had plenty of time with Annika. Sure. But as time went on and we were able to let Annika set the pace in her relationship with me, we also discovered the value of one-on-one -on -one time in step relationships. Yes. And we were pretty intentional about creating that between me and Annika. Yeah, you do have to be strategic around that. Totally. Careful. Yeah, and it did really relieve that stranded stranger mm. piece in me where I felt yeah. like I was now becoming more a part of the overall um, experience yeah. in the overall family. Yeah, not on the outside yeah. as much. And that was great, but... You know, as everyone just heard in that conversation with her, life wasn't always fun in our house. No. But we've experienced plenty of conflict. And around our 10th year of marriage, that conflict got really extreme. Yeah. And it almost ended our marriage. Yeah. Now, I know that we tried to be very careful about what we allowed the kids to witness and what we tried to keep behind closed doors, mm -hmm. but it was really interesting to me to hear Annika use the word hidden. Yeah, that was interesting. And, you know, I'm not sure we ever really tried to hide things from mm -hmm. the kids. In fact, one of our core values is authenticity in sure. our family. But we were careful when we were in that place of being stuck mm -hmm. in conflict that we just couldn't seem to resolve. Mm -hmm. So when it came to that kind of stuff, our big goal was to show the kids healthy conflict resolution, mm -hmm. but protect them from unresolved conflict and yeah, ongoing conflict. Yeah. So it's, it's really kind of cool to hear her share that she knew things were going on, right? She sensed <laughs> yeah. the tension. Sure. That we were struggling, of course, but she also recognized that we took responsibility for mm. our stuff. We did new things and we tried to create some stability for all the kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. You know, and the thing is, you can't really hide conflict from kids, right? No. Kids usually know when you're struggling, but I think many of them also know when you're genuinely working on your stuff. Absolutely. Uh, something that I learned from this conversation with Hanukkah is that you don't need to be perfect. No. I, I was <laughs> far from perfect in how I treated you, honey, or her. But you do need to make progress. We all need to make progress. And we let, need to let the kids witness a healthy model for conflict resolution. Yeah. It's it's pretty unrealistic to think that marriage is going to be conflict free. <laughs> and that's going to be true for our kids someday, too, if they choose to get married. But I think when they witness their parent and step parent genuinely working to create a healthy marriage, it actually gives them a sense of security in the moment, but also a sense of hope for their own future someday. Yeah. And by the way, we believe that every couple can learn to resolve conflict yeah. and, and get unstuck from that place. Totally. You know, honey, the research actually backs up what you just said. Mm. And we've learned this from Ron Deal years ago, that a healthy blended family experience can actually begin to reverse the mm. negative impact that divorce can have on kids. Yeah, that's right. We're so far from perfect, <laughs> but we tried really hard to create a healthy model in our home and to stay united as a couple mm -hmm. and it's pretty amazing to hear some of this from Annika's perspective mm -hmm. yeah all right well let's keep going and hear a bit more of your conversation with Annika uh, you said something earlier when we were talking with mom about um about how you felt like when you and mom were getting into it that that I would I was present but not invasive Yes. Say a little more about that. You never got, you, you had like boundaries or something. Like you were present when me and mom would get into it and start fighting and stuff. And I was whatever, yelling or whatever I was doing. And I always just thought it was so strange at first because I, I wasn't used to it, you know, like, mm. and I assumed that you would just jump in and be, you know. Bossy? No, you never, you <laughs> were just, you, it was, you wanted respect, you know, mm. and I, I think that's very important too, mm. you know? No. Yeah. I liked how you just sat and you observed and maybe sometimes like later we would talk or something, but like I was way more like, um, like receptive. Yeah. Yeah. Receptive. Mm -hmm. Like later on 
because you didn't get involved in the moment, you know? And so oh. I just thought that was cool. And later when you started getting involved, I was kind of like, like, this is between me and mom, you know, and stuff <laughs> yeah. and acting like a brat. But at the same time, you were never like, you just wanted respect and respect towards mom. And mm. that's also too why I, I know that you love her so much because that's mm. not right, you know, to do that. And, and I was like, kind of mad at first and then and then it's like you're just trying to parent me and i i do think of you as a dad too Mm. so so it sounds like some things that you really appreciated was i did my best to uh, not be invasive when you and mom needed to work through some stuff yes i I didn't butt in when Mm -hmm. i shouldn't have um i that did take restraint i will tell you i I bet it was (laughs) i know i could yeah Yeah. And and it also sounds like something you appreciated is that there was a sense of, I'm, you didn't say this, but I'm kind of reading into it. So correct me if I get this wrong. Mm-hmm. It sounds like there was a sense of stability, even when me and mom were struggling Yes, because it was clear that we loved each other Yes, and, and we made that mm-hmm. a priority. No. Yeah. And I just, I know I keep comparing it to my dad's house, but I I've seen a lot, you know, a lot of unstable things, you know, just going on in general there that weren't hidden from the kids, you know, mm-hmm. even my younger siblings, I know that they, even though they don't say it, they, they, they struggle. They've mm-hmm. seen a lot of stuff, you know, so it's like really respectful that you kept that to yourself. And I know mm-hmm. it's not always going to be perfect, you know, sure. obviously, but yeah. I liked that. And I felt like, yeah, stability in the household. Like I wasn't worried, you know, about mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know. You know, yeah. it was never chaotic like that. That sure. that makes you worried, obviously. And one yeah. in the house of a kid, you know, would think that. But yeah, well, good. I'm glad that we were able to provide that for you. Yes, yeah. and I'm glad that you were yeah. able to work through it. You, we are too. It's a miracle <laughs> that we're celebrating 20 years later, and yeah. we're we're still talking through that. Yeah, That's awesome. awesome. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the flip side. What would you say might be two or three things that you wish I would have done differently over the last 20 years? Um, so you started interjecting in conversation, like with me and mom, because, and I remember not specific times, but I remember mom would, you know, just get like, uh, like she didn't know what to do. And it was frustrating because we would butt heads and all this stuff. And so she needed, she needed you, you know, and mm-hmm. you had been, around long enough I'd say to like parent me you know and you mm-hmm. were the par- the parental figure there at least in this house like I didn't ever think like oh he's just my stepdad like he shouldn't be parenting me it wasn't like that right. but I was just like it's kind of more just this is between me and mom like just stop like mm. you know I don't know more adolescent maybe like middle school I don't know when it was but I remember that I was getting annoyed by it and stuff but <laughs> you still never like you wouldn't like butt in, you know, but you, you said what you thought, you know, of the situation and how I was like speaking to mom, you know, which wasn't okay and all that. Sure. So looking back now when I'm older, you know, I can, I recognize that and I think it, mom needed that and mm. I needed that too, you know, but, mm. um, so I guess that's one thing, but mm-hmm. I understand it now. So the, so it was hard for you at the time where I started to interject a little bit more. That's yeah, what you're saying. I think, yeah, I think I like got snarky, you know, like I was like. Sometimes. So that was kind of interesting to yeah. me that, you know, when I asked her what she wanted, what she appreciated about mm-hmm. the things that I did, she said, oh, you kind of hung in the background. And even when you did interject, you were respectful. And then when I said, well, what are some things you wish I would have done differently? <laughs> She's like, oh, it was really hard for me when you did start interjecting. Yeah. So it was almost like the same answer for both questions. And it just shows, I think, some of that wrestling or that struggle that was happening as we were testing the waters of, about what she could handle from me. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things in our journey that I'm most grateful for is that we did get some education and Mm. some information about Mm. roles in blended families and what role a step parent should play when it comes Mm. to parenting and discipline. And we started, you started out slow. I mean, you really really did hang back and she noticed that, but I, I think it's funny the comment she made, you'd been around long enough Mm -hmm. to interject. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point you'd been in her life 
quite a while, for, a number yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah for a number quite of years. a while. Yeah, I agree with that. And what's funny is, you know, from her perspective, okay, he's been around long enough. Mm-hmm. Like, like we're just hanging out for like years. Yeah. But in reality, we, you and I were trying to really employ some specific strategies. We and we were being very thoughtful about how we were going to go about letting me interject when it might be appropriate and really observing how she related to yeah, it. How she responded. And, and there were times, it was like a dance. There it were was. times where we were stepping on toes big time, but then there were other times where it worked out and it was really comfortable. There was a lot of trial and error and messiness. Absolutely. I had to chuckle when she said, you know, mom and I would butt heads and mom really needed help. Mm. And I did. I mean, mm. I was coming from this place of being really a paralyzed parent mm-hmm. after the divorce where I was very permissive and she kind of ran the show. Mm-hmm. And we got together and started deciding on what kind of structure needed to be implemented and mm-hmm. boundaries. And that was a huge learning curve for me to step yeah. up and and be more authoritative yeah. in my parenting. And you were supportive in the background through all of that. Mm. And you made me a better parent. Mm. And then when she got to be a teenager and we really <laughs> did have some big challenges mm. um, around parenting, Annika, you were there. You mm. were a support person. And like she said... You, you would explain what you thought about mm. the situation. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I think you did a good job. Well, thanks. Um, I mean, I think we did a pretty good job most of the time mm-hmm. figuring out what she could handle and what she couldn't handle when yeah. it came to discipline. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so, you know, even as we're being strategic and even as we're trying to, to move forward, look, parenting is just hard <laughs> and and she's not going to like changes she's yeah. going to want it her way and yeah. every kid when they're in that adolescent stage or really at any stage mm-hmm. they want what they want mm-hmm. and so we we sometimes we have to press in and mm-hmm. push the boundaries a little bit and other times we need to be really careful and and hang back but but it's a uh, um it's like a dance yeah. yeah 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 and when we hit those tough teen years and we had to actually start implementing contracts with her around behavior and around driving and other mm. things. I mean, you were all in on that. Mm. We, we wrote those contracts together. We presented yeah. them together. We had long conversations behind closed doors of what yeah. we were going to say and how we were going to present it. Yeah. And yeah, it was hard for her to jump that gap of you kind yep. of being in the background to stepping up more. But, you know, in hindsight, she saw it as a good thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, ultimately yeah. she got there. And yeah. so again, that's where, for people who are listening, that's what we want to do with this episode is mm-hmm. just kind of bring some hope that even when you're in the middle of that really difficult, challenging season or time with your kids, your stepkids, they are growing. They're moving toward <laughs> adulthood and they're they're learning along the way. Man, I can tell you, we thought that Annika was not learning. She has she clearly actually, shown us over the years yeah, that she she's been learning. picked up a lot yeah. of the stuff yeah. we taught her over the years, even when it didn't feel like it yep. at the time. But it wasn't always sunshine and roses. No. So let's get back to the conversation <laughs> and see what else we can discover. When might be a time that you remember really being mad at me? I remember being mad at you, but I don't remember what it was for. <laughs> mm, okay. Like, like, do you remember a time I got oh, really I, rem- I remember lots of times you were mad at me. <laughs> like yeah. really mad um i i think you know when you were turning 18 we yeah. were really struggling yeah you were making some poor choices and we had to set some really strong boundaries mm-hmm. and you know i remember one of the times when you left the house and i came out onto the sidewalk and was actually yelling at you and you were oh, yelling yeah. at me and i, I slammed the door and yeah. we really got into it yeah, I remember that actually. And but like at the same time I knew the rules that you were setting weren't unrealistic or you know what I mean? They weren't mm-hmm. they needed to be done set. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew that in the back of my head, but of course I was like this is way too over the top and unfair, you know, all that. But I still knew at that time that it made sense, you know, and you weren't being cruel, you know. It mm. I wasn't doing what I needed to be doing, so Yeah. We were pretty mad at each other that day. Yeah. Yeah. When might it be a time maybe you remember feeling like something was unfair? 
of course, when I'd get mad at you, I thought it was unfair, you know, because I thought <laughs> I was right and whatever. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, eventually I realized that you guys were right and you weren't trying to, like, I don't know what the word would be, but, like, not control me. But you weren't trying to, like, be strict, you know, and stuff. And that's kind of mm-hmm. what I would always, like, think about, you know. I'm like, oh, they're so, like, strict and all this and that. And then, but you weren't, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it wasn't. I would think that's unfair, but it's, I don't know. Yeah. Do you remember the time you got in trouble at school and the school was trying to reach your parents and your dad was unavailable, mom was in Bellingham, and I was the only one available. And so I ended up being the the one to come pick you up. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think I do. And then we, we came home and we were sitting out in the driveway right here Mm -hmm. and we sat in the car for actually a long time and talked do you remember that? yeah i do remember that yeah what do you remember feeling at that time um i felt embarrassed Mm. you know like Mm. the and i think it was something bad too and i know i've gotten in trouble at school quite a few times but i just remember feeling like just like down on myself you know like this is just Mm. you know like I was embarrassed initially, but then, yeah, I guess we just sat in the car. Like I, I feel like I didn't want to move. Like I just, just wanted to sit there and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've never felt like I couldn't talk to you, you know, even Mm -hmm. when I'm embarrassed and stuff, because, Mm -hmm. because you just always listen to what I have to say and, Mm -hmm. and you don't make me feel dumb, which is nice. (laughs) You're not dumb, honey. (laughs) It's, it's interesting to think about those things. You know, when I, when I, see you now and I think about you now you're going to be 26 this year I wonder you know there's a lot of a lot of people that we get to talk to that have kids who are in that adolescent stage they're in middle school they're in high school and they're really struggling and in those times it feels like this is never going to be different yeah and here you are now you know you're you're going to be 26 so it's you know 10 years after you know, yeah. that, that 16 year old stage and you look back on it now, what, what would you say to like maybe some parents who are struggling with their kids that would bring them some hope about the future? Yeah. I mean, just don't back down because I mean, so I got kicked out at 18. You Everyone did. probably knows that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like not the time, like I was upset. Like I said, I still knew it was what needed to be done, you know, Mm -hmm. and nothing was like, nothing was a surprise. I did it to myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was not ever mad. And I think mom was really worried like that I, and you maybe too, like that I was not resented you, but you know, Mm -hmm. like felt it, but honestly, thank you because Mm -hmm. I needed to like learn some stuff and Mm -hmm. I'm alive, you know, like I, I'm still surviving and probably wouldn't have learned the things I did, you know, if that Mm -hmm. didn't happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just don't back down like in discipline, but also discipline in a nice, cool, calm and collected way, because Mm -hmm. it goes a lot longer of way. Like I am way, I loved listening to you. Like I didn't love listening to you discipline me, (laughs) but like I could understand it, you know, Mm because you're not yelling, you're not, Mm. Um, just saying and saying things like their mistakes don't make them, you know, and I love that you and mom have always told me that because Mm. I, you know, I'm embarrassed, but I also own my mistakes, obviously, Mm. like it is what it is, but I know that that's not who I am. And I love that you and mom have always told me that. Mm. And, and it's true, you know, it's, I did some things and things I would never do again now, you know? So it's like, yeah. So it sounds like. Even even though, you know, we went through some tough years, figuring out how to set boundaries in a loving way was good for you. Yes, yes. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's interesting that you share that now, you know, being uh, more mature, being older and, and past some of those years, that there is life on the other side of all that. Yeah, and... I'll just say like, even when I was 18 and that all happened and I lived in that one house and people would ask me, you know, and I'd tell them, oh yeah, I got kicked out of my parents' house, but you know, they made me sign a contract, you know, that I wouldn't smoke weed and I couldn't stop smoking weed. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, they, 
everyone thinks, oh, that's so harsh and this and that, but I understood it, you know? So you guys did a good job at like letting me know, obviously, that this is what's going to happen. You know, if you do this, you're an adult now. Mm -hmm. And I did it. So Mm -hmm. it made sense, you know, so that I think was a really good way of disciplining like you guys. I don't know. It's interesting. You know, one of the things mom and I've always encouraged each other in as we've been through some tough years Mm -hmm. is we've all, we would always say it's not the end of Annika's story, you know, because sometimes you're in the middle of it, you're in the thick of it and you think, Oh my gosh, this is just going to be life forever. Right. It's easy to, yeah. But now look where you are. Mm -hmm. You've been putting yourself through school. You've been clean for a long time Yes, and you've been working hard at pulling life together. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the end of your story. And even today, at, you know, 20 coming up on 26, Mm -hmm. it's not the end of your story now either. And there's tons of life still to be had. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's an encouragement to me. And I think that that needs to be encouraged in other, you know, others who might Mm -hmm. be listening is, Hey, whatever might be happening, wherever you are, it's always only just a season. Right. And it's not the end of the story. Right. And it's easy to get to think it's more than just a season, you know, and and it's not like we weren't talking, you know, throughout sure. those years. Like we yep. still would meet up for, you know, church mm-hmm. on how I remember getting dressed to go see you guys one day or whatever, like for East, I don't know. But I remember I saw photos and I was like, oh, I was living at that house then, mm-hmm. you know, but, and yeah, we didn't talk a lot, but I know you guys were still, and you made it clear to me too. Like we're always here yeah. We support you still, you know, but, yeah. and so I never felt like left or abandoned or anything like that. Like I know Mm. where my choices landed me. So it was tough love. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I remember one piece kind of circling back to that conversation we had in the driveway after I picked you up from school that one day, I remember telling you, I love you. I want you to know. I was like, you know, above everything else, I just want you to know that I love you. And I remember you really wrestling with it and you saying, how could you love me? Yeah, because I felt like so embarrassed, you know? Yeah, yeah. What do you think we've done along the way that reassures you that not only are you loved, but you're lovable? Just honestly how you speak to me, like, I don't know. I've always felt loved and and I tend, sometimes I'll say, I'm, you know, I'm stupid or like, I don't know, I was like dumb, and then you'll just be like, you're not dumb, like you just said the other, <laughs> like before this, I'm pretty sure you said that, and it just, it's it doesn't have to be a whole, you know, conversation, but it's just the little things, you know, that, mm. that you interject that make me, because I do, like, obviously, we know, like, I have self-doubt, I feel sometimes, and mm-hmm. I have not enough confidence, which mm. has grown a lot, but you know, still it's, and I know everyone to a certain degree probably has, you know, some self doubt, but mm. I don't know. You guys have always believed in me and it, and it didn't matter what, for what, you know, what I was doing, basically speaking, I think mom would say speaking truths to me mm-hmm. Like, like, mm-hmm. and that's exactly like what it is, you know, and everyone needs to hear that, you know, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Everybody needs to be encouraged, right? Yeah. Along the way. Wow, that was uh, quite a piece of the conversation there. You know, clearly we've been through some stuff yes. with Annika. I mean, having to uh, kick her out of the house at 18 was probably one of the hardest mm-hmm. parenting decisions we've made in our yeah. 20 years together. And it's so interesting to me that now we're on the back end of that. And what we're hearing is, yes, we had to set these hard boundaries and you know, as we walked through that with some intention, not perfection, but intention Mm -hmm. to ensure that Annika always knew she was loved. um, Somehow we got a few things right because it sounds like that came through. And, and so for, for those of you who are listening right now, um, what I just want to encourage you in is it is possible to set strong boundaries and do it in a loving way so that after it's all said and done, that the kids can express at that barbecue conversation (laughs) someday that, you know what, Uh, we had some tough times, but I was loved. And it is possible to get there. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like, okay, 
I just have no idea how to do that. Um, we would love to come alongside and help you. If you're feeling that twinge right now of, man, I want that, but I need help, then now's the time um, to reach out and, and, and simply just go to our website, mikeandkimcoaching.com and make a, a free appointment with us. We'd love to help you. Yeah, we look forward to serving you in that way because we've been in this trench. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we've had a lot of struggles mm -hmm. around setting boundaries. And you know, that situation that you and Annika were talking about when you went and picked her up at school that day, mm -hmm. it was a very big it violation. It was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, that was the final thing that got her expelled, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is how you respond in yeah. the moment. That's yeah. what we had to learn to do, to respond mm -hmm. well in those moments where you want to lecture and you want to yell and mm -hmm. you want to be little. Yeah. But as Annika said, what goes a long way in those moments is staying cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Cool, calm, and delected yeah. discipline. That's because what we... <laughs> then she also said, I loved listening to you discipline me. Uh, no, she said, I, I didn't love listening <laughs> to you discipline me, but I did love listening to you when we would talk afterward. Right. Yeah. When you stayed yeah. cool, calm, and collected, even yep. talking about the tough stuff. That's right. And this wasn't this wasn't something that just came naturally to us. No, not we at all. had to learn this. This was a skill of mm -hmm. how to respond when things are not going well. That's right. And it's amazing that Annika actually thanks us now. I know. <laughs> and realizes, you know, I had some things to learn. And by setting this boundary in a loving way, mm -hmm. we actually set her up for that opportunity to learn and grow that she can look back on and go, yeah. I needed that. Mm -hmm. And that all comes down to learning how to do boundaries well, which is a skill that anyone can learn. That's right. At any time. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's dive back in and see what else Annika might have to say. Okay. What's been the hardest thing about life in our blended family from your perspective? The court stuff like with my dad was that was obviously a hard time. Mm -hmm. um, what were you feeling when we were walking through the, through those few years? I guess I was feeling confused, honestly, like mm -hmm. I didn't really know how to feel, you know, and that's, and that wasn't fun, you know, cause I didn't know how I should feel. Like it was just uncomfortable kind of, cause it's like, you know, I love both my families and mm -hmm. I don't know. I was just really I wanted it to be done. Yeah. <laughs> like I wanted it to be over for sure. And mm. yeah, I don't know. It sounds like you might've felt stuck. Yeah. Mm. And I knew it wouldn't last forever, but that's kind of how it felt. And there's just so much emotion too, with like mo how mom, obviously mom loves me and my dad loves me so much. So that there's like emotions and mm -hmm. I hated, I hated how my dad talked about my mom and I would take it with a grain of salt, though, you know, mm. like I would listen to him and not say anything, but I know my mom, I know who my mom is. And mm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was, it was definitely a tough few years. And, and I know uh, it was uh, tough for you too. It was tough for everybody. Sure. It, it's interesting to, you know, I, I love how you just said, look, I, I love both of my families, right? And, yeah. that, and so, you know, like kind of that, why can't we all just get along or, and I think we all did at one point and, and I yeah. hated going, I don't know if this answers the question at all, but going back and forth sucked when I was like mm -hmm. in middle school and all the bags I would carry, <laughs> never been a light packer either. So it's like, <laughs> yes, I know my that life back and forth. And yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think one of the things that had gave a, a special place in my heart for you is you mean, you know, my story. You, yeah. you know, the challenges I faced. Mm -hmm. And even though mine was unique compared mm -hmm. to a lot of people moving back and forth between two parents, I was moving back and forth between my dad's home and my, my deceased mom's grand, you know, parents' right. home. So right. my grandparents mm -hmm. and Papa. And, uh, I just remember the, the, the feeling of being stuck in the middle of this, right. these two places that I really did love. Right. And I, I remember lots of times trying to explain to mom how you might have been feeling along yeah. the way. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, you don't. And I think a big part of the hard of it being hard as well was 
going to the new house or the other house, you know, Mm -hmm. and then adjusting to it. Like it's a completely different household. So it's your family, you know, I'm comfortable, but just different, you know, and just Mm -hmm. each week or whatever it was, it's just like, just adjusting. I feel like by the time I was like fully, you know, getting in the swing of it at that house, Oh, Mm -hmm. go to the next, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. That's gotta be tiring. Well, at the time I was like, I didn't, really care that much like I didn't really I wasn't upset about going back and forth really back yeah. then during it but I think it was hard sure when I didn't realize it was hard you know like yeah it's interesting you were you were like two when your mom and dad split up mm-hmm. and so you don't ever remember not going back and forth right yes and so why do you think you know you hit I, I think it was probably late middle school where you were like kind of getting to that point where you're like fed up with it yeah and I feel like because yeah it's just always been I never I don't remember my parents together you know so it's always been the two separate whether they were with someone else or not you know and they got remarried pretty quickly which is fine you know and Mm -hmm. I didn't mind that at all but yeah it's just I never really was in one house you Mm -hmm. know so it just became my life Mm -hmm. you know so Mm -hmm. kind of a nomad yeah yeah and so you're the oldest of a total of six kids between mm-hmm. two households, right? Yes, including me. Including you, right? And so now you're kind of the, the mother hen, if I could use that term, of yeah. all these little kids. Yeah. What was that like for you to be the only child and then suddenly yeah. over the course of, a, of like three years, you had five other siblings in two households? Yeah. I mean, at the time, like kind of like the moving back and forth, I, I just went with it and I had mm-hmm. never, I was, I think I was excited for my siblings I, mm-hmm. and I remember helping raise them, you mm-hmm. know, just being there and it was just life, you know, and mm-hmm. these are my siblings now. Like yeah. it wasn't like I was mad about anything during the time, but I think it probably was hard, like, like, you know, it's just different. And Mm -hmm. I feel like just adjusting to them getting, you know, attention. I never felt like Mm -hmm. jealous of them like that at all. But something I've, I've often wondered, and I don't know, I don't know if I've ever asked you about this or how you felt about it, but what was it like for you to be the only one that had to move back and forth while all the other kids stayed put? Yeah, I think. That I might have been a little jealous of, (laughs) but I mean, not like outwardly, but just jealous because they had all their stuff and like, I hated it because I had to make sure I grabbed everything, you know, Mm -hmm. and like not forget anything, but they could just stay there and have their room set up and not take anything out. So it's Mm -hmm. like, it kind of, it bothered me, but I obviously wanted to see both families. So it was fine, but it's just like, yeah, actually, I think I remember thinking something like, Like, it's so much easier for them, too, and they don't Mm -hmm. have to leave, like, Mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I think I did think about that because I was, like, jealous, but not jealous. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I wanted to just stay in one house, too, but I knew it. I couldn't, you know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That must have been irritating. Yeah. (laughs) Wow, you know, as annika's biological mom it's hard for me to listen to some of that yeah it's really hard to hear how tough some of these realities are for kids that are moving back and forth between two homes Mm -hmm. you know how she Mm -hmm. talked about being confused and those really tough emotions feeling stuck in between two parents she loved yeah i mean it just breaks my heart sure to think about you know (laughs) all that she's gone through. And Mm -hmm. honestly, I remember as we were living through all of this and she would even say, this sucks going back and forth. And Oh, I forgot this and all of the struggle. You know, I remember kind of wanting to stick my head in the sand Mm. and fall into that trap of thinking, you know, kids are adaptable. She'll figure it out. This isn't a big deal. And Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, Mike is awesome. And this is a great situation for me and it's a great situation for her right and kind of just um avoiding Mm. all of this painful reality that she was living week in and week out back and forth and you know we cannot underestimate how difficult these dynamics can be for our kids sure 
And having empathy and understanding for what they're experiencing is mm. just critical. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. It, it's interesting to me as I think about and I, about what she shared, it was the little stuff, mm-hmm. right? And I, I think that we have this tendency to, to think, oh, we need to make these big sweeping moves or we need to uh, have these big giant leapfrog moments in our, in our journey that is going to get us to the place that we want. But in that question where I asked her, you know, hey, what are some of the good things? She said it was the little stuff. Yeah. And then I asked her, hey, what were some of the bad things, <laughs> right? And the stuff she described was the, the nitpicky, moving back and forth, having to do all this stuff. And we know our story. We mm-hmm. went through some big, difficult things like three years of a court battle. Yeah. But what she named was the small stuff. Yeah. And, and when we can up our empathy, we can start to actually see the small stuff. And then we can come alongside and be a part of the journey yeah. with them. Yeah. And I, I think the tough part, you know, is that, the little things are things that we can't necessarily fix. Yeah. You know, yeah. she wanted to stay in one house too, mm-hmm. like her, her siblings, yep. but she knew she couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't fix that. Right. So it's easy for me to just avoid it mm-hmm. and pretend like, oh, it's not a big deal, but it mm-hmm. really was tough for her. Mm-hmm. So we want to be able to come alongside our kids and understand without mm. feeling like we have to fix it or mm. that we have to avoid it, mm-hmm. but just listening and understanding and validating. That, Absolutely. That this, Yeah, it does suck moving back and forth. I get that. Yeah. I'm sorry you have to be there yeah. and you're handling it like a champ Yeah, or, and not, or however you put it. Right. And then not feeling guilt about it. Yep. Just yep. helping them and then moving on and not feeling heavy. Yeah. I think it's the heaviness mm-hmm. that keeps our heads stuck in the sand. But mm-hmm. once we can get our heads up and out of the sand and actually just deal with reality as it is in those little things that we can't fix, yep. I think that really helps our kids. Totally. I agree. Well, we're going to head into the last part of my conversation mm-hmm. with Annika, and we're going to turn the tables on me a little <laughs> bit, and I'm going to invite her to ask me some questions. Ooh. So let's check it out. <laughs> well, I wonder, I've asked, I've like been peppering you with questions. And so when you think about, you know, just growing up, or maybe there's some things that have been on your mind that you've wondered along the way, well, what questions might you have to ask me? Um, were you like scared to be like a parental figure, like, cause you didn't have kids already or I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, actually I was pretty nervous. In fact, mom, I remember mom making a comment about, she was looking at our wedding pictures one day and she was like, you didn't, you weren't really smiling a lot in the wedding pictures. I know you actually were pretty stoic. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. And some of that was nerves. And I think some of that was because I grew up in a dysfunctional blended family and I was really nervous about, well, how are we going to make sure that that doesn't, yeah, I want it to be different. And yeah, I was, I was afraid. Maybe there were times where I could have had more influence, where I could have spoken up more, Yeah, but because of the nervousness that Mm -hmm. you were just asking about, and because I was uh, maybe overly cautious about putting you off. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have held back more than I needed to. Yeah. Cause every time you would tell me stuff, like I've always thought that you're very wise. Like mm-hmm. I know you're not genius, but like everything you've told me is like very wise, you know? And I, I always liked what you had to say, you know, mm-hmm. even if it was just something small, you know, like mm-hmm. I feel like you and you know what to say, like in the right moments, you know, when you do, and you weren't like quiet all the time, but no, I wasn't, <laughs> you know, well, what else would you ask me? Um, it can be anything like a trip or anything, but what's like one of your favorite things that we did or would do or whatever together like mm. that we've done or, well, definitely riding the dunes with you was up there, yeah. but riding the dunes was leading us I was gonna say, to go to yeah. JH ranch and together, amazing. which you know, I mean, we had an absolutely amazing time. For those of you who are listening, JH Ranch is a parent-child camp in uh, California. They also do student ministry stuff. And and Annika and I have had the privilege of going twice together. And what was really interesting to me about that that I think was, was cool, I would say 
This might have been the most nervous I ever was about trying to interact with you. Actually, it was asking oh. you to go to the camp oh, with yeah. me. And I don't know if you remember, but I I wasn't sure how I was going to ask you to go spend this week with me. And I really didn't think you would want to go spend a week with me. And so it was leading up to our anniversary, whichever year it was. And I remember coming in and saying, hey, every year on our anniversary, I always do something. Yeah. Right? We always acknowledge you every year yes. on our anniversary. And I love that as well. Well, I'm glad you do. <laughs> and And I remember coming in and saying, hey, you know, every year... Um, we do something for our anniversary and this year I'm going to ask something from you. And I remember you were in your bedroom and you're like looking at me all confused, like, oh, great. What's he going to yeah. ask? <laughs> and I just said, well, all I'm going to ask of you is for some time. And then I talked to you about JH Ranch and you like instantly were like, yeah, I want to go to that. That'd be yeah. awesome. And I remember going downstairs and telling mom, like, she totally agreed to it, like right on the spot. <laughs> Did mom think I was going to agree? We weren't sure. We were we were really concerned about whether you would agree to go with me or not. But I think, you And know, you're pretty cool, so. Well, I would, thanks. You know. I don't know. I'm kind of dorky, but <laughs> cool at the same time. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you asked me, like, you're asking me to do something, like, I don't know, not fun or something. That's right. what I was like. <laughs> maybe I teed the ball up really well to, to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get your maybe. expectations in line. <laughs> Anyway, I think strategy. that for me was a really special moment because it was a moment where I felt like you really accepted me. Yeah. And maybe I maybe I didn't realize that you had really accepted me mm -hmm. by that point. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. guess I've never said it, you know, but I mm -hmm. feel I feel like I feel like I you should know, but you know, I never, you know, say it. So. Sure. Well, you know, when you're, when you're like 15, you're not thinking about saying, yeah. saying sappy stuff to stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if there's somebody out there listening and they're thinking, gosh, I'm just, I'm, I'm a step parent and I'm really having a hard time connecting with my stepchild. What do you think you might say just as a, as an encouragement for them? It doesn't come overnight, you know? And I think mm -hmm. like if you're new, you know, just let them come around, you know, I don't know, don't force anything on them, but still invite them to do stuff like in a casual way, though, mm -hmm. you know, don't make it a thing like, oh, we're going to go out to eat this day of every week. You know, it's mm -hmm. just casual. And like with you, it's just like, I feel like we're friends, you know, but mm -hmm. like, I do consider you my dad. So it it's just a balance between those things. And depending on what like you're struggling with, and why maybe ask yourself is mm -hmm. why do you think that it is an issue that you aren't connecting and mm -hmm. maybe like brainstorm ideas from there. I don't know. That's really wise. It's good to ask why sometimes, you know, um, you haven't gotten educated around blended family life. You've lived it. Yeah. Right? Mom and I've done a lot of the education, yeah. but what you just said is actually one primary principle that is true. And that is let the child set the pace. Yes. And be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to take time. Yeah. It's not going to happen It changes over the years. It's, yeah. you know. It's not the end of the story. It's hard to build relationships in general, you know. And mm -hmm. a lot of times kids are angry, you know, with the divorce. And luckily mm -hmm. I never felt angry, you know, mm -hmm. with my new families or whatever. But I'm sure I still struggled with it, you know. Sure. Internally, like, that I didn't express or think about then. Yeah. But I know... Sometimes you're not aware of it, you know, so mm -hmm. just don't be over the top, but also invite them to do yeah. things, invite them yeah. to opportunities in life with you. That's good. Honey, I'm so glad that we got a chance to sit and talk and I hope that this brings value to others. Yes, me too. All right. Well, I love you. Thank you for taking this time. I love you too. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what a privilege it was to spend that time with yeah. Annika, kind of having my own little barbecue mm -hmm. conversation with her, like I mentioned early yeah. on. You know, just catching that vision of what we wanted, mm -hmm. it's really all about intentionality. Mm -hmm. And we did that a, a long time ago. And I think uh, of all the things that we did to invest in our family, that's one of the best things that we did. We, we said we were going to be intentional about catching a vision for what we want mm -hmm. and then and then actually get the education and the support along the way in order to make it happen. Now, 
clearly from the story, it wasn't perfect, <laughs> no, right? No, it was not perfect. But I heard a lot of really encouraging things along that conversation. Oh, definitely. And yeah, at one point in the conversation, Annika mentioned that one of the most challenging times was during the court stuff with her dad. Mm-hmm. And that was a very long and difficult season of parental alienation where yeah. we were in the court system for three, three years. years yeah. yeah, and if you want to learn more about that or hear our story, you can go back and listen to episode 42, Mm -hmm. which is all about parental alienation and our story around that. Yeah. And some tips for you if Mm -hmm. you're experiencing some of those struggles as well. Well, Mm -hmm. we hope that this has brought you value and, and our desire is that it brings you some encouragement and some hope as well along the way. And if you need help, if you need support, please reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And in the show notes, we've put a link Uh, for you to schedule a free coaching session with us. We'd love to connect with you. But for now, we're going to make this episode a wrap. Until next time.